Thank, thank you, Heath. Thank you. I really appreciate you all um, uh, bringing me back here. Um, and you know, last time I was here, I talked about um, Israel and Palestine, and and now I, I'm, I'm being asked to talk about what, believe it or not, may be an even more complex <laughs> uh, problem. Uh, and one, one with, again, with no no easy uh, solutions. I. I, as Keith mentioned, I have spent time in the Middle East, and including a, a number of trips to Syria prior to the outbreak of the war, uh, where I, I, I met with um, some top government officials, including the foreign minister and, and others, as well as, uh, as, as dissidents, um, uh, academics, and others. But, but my main impressions of Syria was it was one of the most beautiful countries I've, I've ever been, been to. Uh, the, the natural beauty of, of the mountains, uh, the um, a great archaeological wonders, a great uh, uh, water wheels, and and hum, uh, and, and, and Hama, the, uh, the 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 homes, the the um, uh, Crusader uh, castles, the um, Palmyra, the Roman ru ruins, uh, the best preserved in, in the world, Aleppo, one of my absolutely favorite cities I've ever been to, uh, with its ancient uh, uh, streets and and the um, uh, the the, the uh, <clears throat> great fortress in the middle of the city, where we can overlook it, it, it and. It was a place that seemed very, very authentic, very real. Um, uh, I, I, I was never a fan of the government, as, as you might imagine, but um, uh, the country and its people, one, ones that have always been very uh, dear to my heart. And so to see it descend into this kind of tragedy has been, um, been personally painful for me. And, uh, and even though it's my job to analyze, <laughs> being, my, uh, being uh, an area of specialization in my academic work, uh, um, it, it, it's it's um, it, it, it's been it's been a, it's been a hard one for me, uh, frankly, because I know so many people there, many of whom are, are now are now dead. I, I want to start by, by just giving a little history of the country. Um, you know, Syria, of course, is, is an ancient uh, uh, ancient society. Um, uh, Damascus is one of the longest inhabited cities in the world, going back um, you know, uh, um, uh, for, for um, well over. Um, 4,000 years. The street called Straight is, is, is the, the oldest street in the world. I've, I've walked there and I, uh, through there I, 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 I've seen, you know, where, um, you know, the Apostle Paul the lowered in a basket. That building is still there. You know? It's just uh, uh, re remarkable. Yet, you know, the, the modern boundaries of what we uh, call Syria are like most boundaries in the Middle East and Africa and, 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 and other uh, parts of the colonized, uh, previously colonized world are pretty artificial. Uh, uh, in, indeed, uh, the, the Lebanon was deliberately carved out by the Syrians out of Syria, you know, where they could uh, uh, have a, a Christian mi a minority loyal to the, uh, uh, the French, could have uh, predominate politically and set up the sectarian system, which has caused so many problems there. Uh, the French did some similar uh, work uh, uh, in, in Syria. They, they used the Alawites, a, a religious uh, minority, a, a Muslim uh, um, a sect uh, that represents about 12% of the population. They used them disproportionately in the, um, uh, mil in the uh, military they were trying to build up among military officers. They hope to be loyal to, to France. This is similar to what, you know, the, the favoritism of a minority is an old trick of colonial powers. We saw the British use the Sikhs in India, the Ibo, uh, British use the Ibos in Nigeria, the Americans use the Hmong in Laos and in a similar way. Uh, the, um, the, the French use the Alawites. Uh, the country you know, finally you know, became independent in the 1940s. 1949, they had a free election that elected a, um, a, a left-leaning uh, nationalist government, uh, but uh, in, in apparent cahoots uh, with the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, uh, there was a military coup uh, which overthrew this government, and uh, there have been, that was the last free election the country had. It's been a series of uh, military governments, uh, though uh, through the 50s and beyond, they tended to lean more to the left, uh, more nationalistic. Uh, during the Cold War, uh, Syria uh, allied, though, though, though technically non-aligned, uh, was in many respects allied to the um, Soviet Union. Uh, they, they adopted a strong pan-Arabist uh, um, uh, ideology. In fact, for several years, in the late 50s, early 60s, they merged with Egypt to become one country called the United Arab Republic. The goal is to get all the Arab countries eventually into uh, one nation, but 
uh, <clears throat> Egypt, you know, the Syrians didn't feel they were getting a good end of the deal and, and uh, renewed their independence a few years later. Uh, in 1967, uh, in the um, Arab-Israeli War that June, um, Israel ended up conquering uh, the southwestern part of the country in the over, taking over over half of the Golan uh, province uh, that, uh, uh, and it, it remains uh, as occupied territory, Israeli occupied territory ever since. Most of the Syrian population was ethnically cleansed, though there is a small series of Jews communities that are still consider themselves Syrians that have periodically engaged in nonviolent resistance against the Israeli occupation and, and settlements there. Uh, in 1970, there was a coup uh, by uh, the head of the Air Force, a man named Bashar Assad. He instituted one-man rule and organized uh, state services into sectarian lines, where the Sunnis, the majority, uh, would be the formal heads of political institutions, where the Alawites are given control over the military, intelligence, and security apparatuses. Now, this was not sectarian in the sense of, of, of religion, per se. Um, Indeed, the, the Ba'athist movement and the Assad family are, are pretty secular in their orientation. Uh, but it was uh, a means, uh, given the history of coups in that country, it was basically a way where uh, Assad could uh, be assured of remaining in control. Um, despite not uh, giving lip service to the Palestinian cause, uh, Assad did more harm than good. Uh, the Palestinian refugees that had fled uh, Israel during the, et the original ethnic cleansing in 1948 um, were, were, were largely sequestered to their camps and not uh, the refugee camps and not uh, granted citizenship uh, status. And what support he gave for the uh, opposition tended to be some extremist groups, including some pretty notorious terrorist groups uh, that um, uh, killed a number of Israeli civilians, hijacked airliners, and, and, and engaged in, in, in uh, other acts, acts of terror. In 1975, Syria intervened in the Lebanese civil war, um, ironically, with the support of the United States, uh, trying to crush a victory by a coalition of Lebanese leftists and, uh, um, and, 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 and uh, Palestinians. Um, but uh, it, internally, he focused on a, establishing a kind of semi, uh, authoritarian, uh, secular, semi-socialist you know, kind of uh, political uh, system. Uh, it got resentment from a number of, of, of quarters in society, both left and right. A, uh, a hardline Islamist uprising in 1982 was, was um, savagely uh, suppressed in, in the city of Hama, you know, basically where the uh, uh, hardcore Islamist, Sunni Islamists ended up taking over the heart of the city. Basically, he surrounded uh, Assad's forces surround the city and just bombed and shelled and bombed and shelled uh, for, uh, for, for, for uh, days, uh, resulting in the deaths of, of as many as 10,000 people, uh, mostly civilians. Um, <clears throat> between 1982 and 1984, the United States actually uh, engaged Syrian forces uh, in Lebanon uh, when uh, the U.S. militarily intervened after uh, 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 Israel's invasion. Uh, the um, and the, we killed quite a few Syrians. They shot down a couple of our planes, you know, killing a, a couple of American pi pilots. Uh, yet they are willing, still willing to cooperate with the United States in areas of mutual concern. For example, they sent troops to Saudi Arabia in 1990 as part of Operation Desert Shield uh, in reaction to uh, uh, Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. Even though uh, Saddam was a fellow Ba'athist, uh, the uh, uh, government in, in Syria was always very hostile you know, towards the Iraqis, even to the point of being willing to ally uh, with the uh, United States in, in opposition to um, Iraq's aggression. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in, in fact, their opposition to Iraq was so strong, they were the only Arab country to back Iran during the Iran-Iraq war <laughs> during the 1980s. Um, uh, with also with the support of the United States in December of 1990, just before the Gulf War, uh, the uh, United States supported Syria in uh, staging a coup uh, against a, um, a Maronite general allied with Saddam Hussein, who himself had seized power in a coup uh, a couple of months earlier. Uh, this, of course, led uh, Syria to end up dominating um, 
uh, Lebanese affairs. And it's kind of ironic that the, um, the, the man we helped Syria overthrow later became um, uh, supported by the United States and the Syrians' role in Lebanon, which we initially supported, uh, became the, the subject of a, a U.S. hostility. <laughs> um, in the 1990s, uh, the uh, government of Assad moderated somewhat. It, 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 pretty, it, um, it stopped supporting terrorist groups, uh, opened up uh, the political system at least a little bit, um, and yet the United States kept it on the list of state sponsors of terrorism. I actually interviewed the U.S. ambassador in Damascus about this, and he admitted that, yes, we hadn't seen evidence of them supporting terrorism in recent years, but we're keeping them on the list uh, as leverage to uh, pressure them to be more open to certain uh, U.S. diplomatic initiatives. And this is the first time, I'd, I'd long, many of us had long suspected it, but it was the first time I'd heard it from somebody as high-ranking as U.S. ambassador admit that the uh, t uh, terrorism uh, list, the State Department list of state sponsors of terrorism was, was based at least as much on political concerns as their actual um, uh, uh, um, involvement in, in such activities. The, um, the other way uh, um, Syria moderated was that in its longstanding hostility towards uh, Israel and was willing to recognize Israel's right to exist, uh, have full diplomatic and economic uh, relations, allow you know, for uh, international peacekeeping force and demilitarizing the border region if Israel would withdraw from the occupied Golan Heights. And the, it, the argument came down literally to a couple hundred yards of where the boundary would actually be uh, when the talks broke off, everybody assumed they would be resuming shortly, but uh, Bashar Assad died, uh, and, um, and it ended up cu uh, cutting off uh, the, 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 the talks. He, um, by the time that Syria was willing to resume, uh, the hardline uh, right-wing government had come to power in Israel and um, no longer wanted to pursue negotiations. And the United States, which for years had pushed um, Syria to support the land for peace um, um, you know, formula um, backed away and, and basically uh, said, uh, yeah, and, and basically started you know, uh, uh, um, supporting Israel's position that they'd be able to hold on to the uh, occupied territories even if the Arab, its Arab neighbor wanted to make peace. When, when, when um, Hafez Assad died, he was replaced by his son Bashir. Uh, his first choice was his son, Basel, but he ended up dying in, in, a, um, in, in, a, in a car accident. So he groomed his, his son, uh, Bashir, who, who, was, who was not much of a, um, not much of a political figure. I mean, he was, he was an ophthalmologist trained in Britain. He had no interest in politics. But his father basically you know, wanted him to succeed. And there's some irony here, because the whole idea of the Ba'athist movement and this kind of a Republican revolution in the Arab world was to get away from the archaic, uh, anachronistic uh, uh, tradition of hereditary leadership. Uh, and, and initially, he, 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 he opened, uh, opened up the system somewhat. Uh, it was known as the Damascus Spring. Uh, there was more dissent and, 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 and more, more uh, and, and cultural life bloomed. People were excited that there might actually be a hope for democracy, but, but the door shut uh, relatively quickly. This was, uh, was short-lived. Uh, and, and remained this kind of love-hate relationship um, with the, um, uh, the United States. Um, after the 9-11 tragedy, um, uh, the Syrian government helped the United States in, in trying to crack down al-Qaeda. In fact, even took part in the so-called extraordinary rendition program where uh, the CIA would, would, would kidnap suspects of terrorists, uh, send them to countries where they would be tortured, <laughs> and if, if people, they found people of Syrian background, they would um, send them to Damascus to be tortured. One of them happened to be a, 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 a Canadian citizen who, had, who was perfectly innocent, but had the same last name as a, ter same name as a terrorist suspect, and uh, he was uh, sent to Damascus and tortured a better part of a year before before uh, the U.S. and the Syrians realized he was actually innocent. But uh, despite this cooperation, uh, the, the uh, United States you know, saw Syria in, in a negative light, and Congress almost unanimously passed a, a law in 2004 called the Syrian Accountability Act, which imposed very, very strict sanctions on it. And uh, they, it was based on, uh, in order for the sanctions to be lifted, uh, Syria had to withdraw its forces from Lebanon. Uh, in accordance to the UN Security Council Resolution 425, uh, which called for all foreign troops to leave Lebanon. 
What's interesting, though, is that uh, that resolution uh, was passed uh, 30 years earlier, and the only country they mentioned by name was Israel. But the U.S. had supported Israel's occupation of Lebanon. Israel had unilaterally withdrew from Lebanon in 2000, but now we're insisting it had to be enforced in the case of Syria. And of course, most Lebanese wanted Syria out. Uh, they should have been out. They were, they were violating it. But, but the Syrians said, you know, why are you suddenly interested in enforcing this resolution when you blocked enforcement of the resolution back when, uh, uh, when it primarily involved Israel? Um, the resolution also claimed that Iraq was supporting the uh, armed resistance, the U.S. occupation forces in, um, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Iraq which was a bit bizarre because um, the main forces fighting in the United States were pro-Saddam or Islamist extremists, both of which the uh, Syrian regime had opposed. They also insisted that they return, uh, that the sanctions not be lifted until direct Syrian-Israeli peace talks resumed, even though it was the Israelis who broke it off, not the Syrians. <laughs> and uh, furthermore, you know, they, um, they, 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 they claimed that they had made exaggerated uh, claims about um, um, uh, Syria having a, a serious supposed uh, weapons of mass destruction. They were known to have a chemical weapons stockpile, but they, um, they, they, uh, they, they, um, they cited John Bolton, who in the same testimony claimed that Cuba was developing biological weapons and other uh, bizarre allegations that were later found to be false. Um, he, and, and who was one of the big people promoting the, the scare attacks around Iraq, this is the same person that was cited in this uh, uh, Senate uh, resolution and, the, um, and, and also they insisted that Syria unilaterally disarm its missiles, uh, even though Turkey, Israel, Saudi Arabia, others had more sophisticated missiles that had to unilaterally get rid of their chemical weapons, even though Israel and, and Egypt still had their chemical weapons. Um, and I could go on, but, but the, 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 what was striking about this resolution is that even though the concerns raised about Syria in many cases were valid, uh, some cases exaggerated, uh, the behaviors that Syria were involved in were, were very similar to um, um, the behaviors of countries allied to the United States. And so Syria you know, felt they could just reject these demands. Uh, and uh, were, um, but, but it was quite striking the fact that there's hardly a single, I think there may be six dissenting votes, or two dissenting votes, in both houses of Congress. Uh, I think four members abstained. Quite, quite bizarre that nobody actually you know, pointed out you know, some of the inaccuracies within the wording and the double standard. Uh, and and the, the, the extreme, this extreme anti-Syrian stuff has gone back for many years. Even my own union, the American Federation of Teachers, um, passed a resolution in 2006 claiming that Syria was supplying Hamas with sophisticated missiles and Hamas attacks on Israel were being done at the bidding of Syria. <laughs> Uh, but in reality, Syria and Hamas have very bad relations. They've never sent them sophisticated missiles. In fact, Hamas is actively supporting the Islamist opposition, attacking uh, and fighting the Assad regime uh, this day. But um, it's a sort of ex example of the, um, uh, of the extreme, um, how it made it very difficult, basically, here in the United States to have much national discourse on, on, on Syria, and why many Syrians, even those opposing the government, frankly do not trust the United States and our intentions there. Um, indeed, in 2006, Bush pushed the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Omer of Israel to launch a massive attack on Lebanon and Syria in anticipation of a, of a, of, of a planned attack on Iran, which uh, uh, didn't happen for various other, other reasons. Uh, but the... Um, uh, uh, Israel did go ahead and, and, and attack Lebanon. They did not think they had the, what it took to attack Syria simultaneously, and even the uh, war on Syria, uh, uh, war on Lebanon against the Hezbollah militants there, ended up being a, a disaster. Uh, that, that too was supported by a large uh, bipartisan majority. In 2007, uh, the Assad regime tried to, to again, with, with a coalition government in Israel, thought maybe they could make, make peace. Again, they offered uh, uh, all the formula of land for peace you know, that people have been talking about for, 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 year, for years, that Israelis have supposedly wanted for years. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Israeli cabinet considered it, were considering it. When Condoleezza Rice, you know, Secretary of State, you know, called the Israeli Prime Minister Holmert and said, don't even think about it. 
uh, the president of Israel, Shimon Peres, admitted that it was U.S. pressure that got them to say no because he pointed out that the Bush administration a few friends that Israel had in the world. We don't want to displease them by making peace with Israel. Basically, what the United States wanted to do you know, was to, uh, we were afraid that if Assad succeeded in getting their land back that had been occupied all these years by Israel, he'd be seen as a national hero and it would strengthen his rule. And again, the goal of the Bush administration was regime change in Syria. That's why he put, put these strict sanctions that you know, no government could reasonably abide by <laughs> uh, because they were so one-sided. Um, it was, it was basically, there was an active effort to try to uh, bring down the um, uh, um, uh, regime. But, <clears throat> but many Syrians were thinking about bringing down the regime. They were more and more dissatisfied. The one li form of liberalization that the younger Assad had put on was economic liberalization. Uh, and, the, uh, and when you have economic liberalization without political liberalization, you end up with a network of crony capitalists, uh, an incredible uh, economic inequality, um, a rampant corruption. And uh, the people of Syria, especially as, as a drought uh, worsened, uh, many, people, many of which people attribute to climate change, uh, created greater and greater a dissent. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting to, to, to point out that despite the socialist rhetoric of the government, the opposition uh, in, that took to the streets in 2011 had a, was, had a stronger working class base than any of the Arab Spring revolutions. Uh, it, was, it, and it was very broad based, across class lines, across religious lines, across ethnic lines. Uh, it was a very broad based uh, a, a movement. Uh, quite, you know, it, 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 wanting a more democratic, more inclusive Syria was, it was overwhelmingly nonviolent. And as someone who's studied uh, uh, mass nonviolent civil insurrections in dozens of countries in recent decades, um, I know of no people who have demonstra who demonstrated such courage and fortitude in the face of such savage repression as did the people of Syria. Uh, the um, what uh, Assad could have done what the autocratic leaders in Jordan and Oman and Morocco did. He could have uh, enacted a few, um, a few reforms that might have placated the, the opposition, um, opened things up a little bit while still you know, maintaining a firm grip on power. Instead, he unleashed his security service to services to massacre people by the hundreds and then by the thousands. Um, indeed, he singled out leading advocates of nonviolence uh, because he saw them as a big, bigger threat than people who might take up arms. Uh, I know one guy who, who had translated the works of Gene Sharp, the, um, um, uh, you know, the, the nonviolent theorist uh, based in, at Harvard. Um, he, he was singled out and, and to be tortured to death. Um, because he's, they saw these subversive writings telling people how they can organize nonviolently as, as, a, as, a, as a, th a threat to the uh, uh, regime. Indeed, he even ordered his special forces, to, snipers, uh, to shoot at regular police and military to make them think that they were being shot at by the nonviolent protesters so they would then return fire and thus justify the, the, the massacres. Now, Many, th many people are wondering why did Syria fail where, you know, in, in um, um, Tunisia and in Egypt, at least initially, and in, in, in Yemen partially, you had, you know, nonviolent non movements were able to bring down the dictators. A lot of, and, and some people say, oh, it's because of Assad's cruelty. And, but it's not really cruelty, per se. I mean, uh, you know, and, and Ben Ali ordered his troops to massacre people by the thousands, and they refused. Uh, they refused. Um, there was um, over a thousand people were killed in only 18 days in, in Egypt, which was a higher rate during the months of, of the uprising in Syria. So it's not just the you know, killing of people that, that keeps you know, the repression that keeps the regime in power. Indeed, that can, have, that can have a backfire effect, where it gets more people out in the streets, and that seemed to be what was going on in, in, in Syria. I think the, the, the reason was is that in the case of um, Ben Ali in Tunisia, uh, Nasser in, in, in Egypt, Gaddafi in Libya, um, Saleh in Yemen, they were, it's more or less one-man rule. 
Um, they, they did not have much of a social base. Their popularity in their final years was in the single digits, probably, or at least under 20% for, for sure. 